Um, now, basically, what it means is that we're going to create a UI in the engine, and we're going to use the gamepad to move around in it and do all sorts of things. Um, so, well, wait, the chat has to stay. Um, I will not go over how to create a variable or anything, so I do kind of expect that you have at least a basic knowledge. So I won't be going over everything specifically, but I will be going over everything related to um, having gamepad support in EMG. Um, so I'm assuming I'm live because I've been talking the entire time. <laughs> um, so, um, hi everyone, uh, let's get started. Um, so I already created a, just a level, um, a game mode, and a play controller, and just a widget. Um, I set the game pad tutorial game modes in the world settings, and as far as nothing else I did, so let's keep it at that. So I'm going to go into the game pad, uh, player controller, and I'm going to make some events. The first on um, begin play, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do shot show mouse cursor to true. So that way we have our mouse cursor because um, I'll be going over how to have gamepad support, but also mouse and keyboards integrated with that. So you don't need to pick between one of them. You can always use both of them. You never have to change the setting to go to back to your mouse or anything. So you can always use both of them. Um, and then I'm going to create a widget. The one I made before, the main widget. And we're gonna promote the third variable, main widget, and then we're just gonna add that to the viewport. Now, just to check if that's working, let's put a button in the middle of the screen, click play. There's a button in the middle of the screen. Perfect. Okay, I'm gonna turn that off because that's going to be a lot of spam. Uh, my closet doors, that's actually, yeah, a closet, but it's not mine. I never use it. Um, but yes, um, if you have a question, just type it in chat and I'll get to it whenever I went over everything. Um, so first, what we're going to do is we're going to create a horizontal um, top bar for navigation. We're going to create a vertical one um, in a widget switcher and then the vertical ones in the widget switchers are going to um, a lot of, you can just display whatever you want there basically. And in there, we will also go over how to scroll that up and down, whatever you display of info there. So uh, we're just gonna create three different um, interactions with the gamepad. But once we go over this, um, it'll be clear on how to do whatever you want. Um, so, First, what we're going to do is we're going to create a vertical box. So let's place a vertical box in here. Let's do that. Actually, do that. Let's do 100, 100, 100, and 100. Just so it's all neatly over the screen. And let's put in a horizontal box. Now, in there, let's add a button. And we're going to call this main settings. I'm just going to call it a few things. Um, main settings, custom settings. I know maybe a news feed. And another one could be customize character. Anything you want to put there. You can put anything. So I just said that. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's been a while since I streamed. Uh, margin is at 15, so it's all nice and neat. And let's put that to font, light, because that looks way better. And now let's put this to fill, 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 and fill. Not fill, that's a name, but let's lock that. Oh no, wait, no. So now stop doing that. If we go in here and we can play, you see that we have all the four buttons on top of this. And we're gonna go over how to navigate between them um, with the gamepad. Now, let's do it already. There's two ways of 
handling this. Now, what you can do is you can have um, set input mode UI only, and you can have set input mode game and UI. Now, usually I work with game and UI because I drive the UI from the player controller. Um, but a lot of people just use UI only. For example, if they're in a menu and they don't need to do anything else, then UI only is useful. Now, if you have UI only and you kind of like gamepad left shoulder will not be caught because that's technically a game. And then you will have to go to your main widget, go to the graph, go to functions overrides, and there's an on key down. Just click that. And from there, you can get the key. Equal. And then you can actually came that left shoulder. There you go. So then you can check if that is that key because this will fire even if you're in UI, UI mode only. But I'm going to have it driven from the player controller. So just target is get player controller or technically just to self because we are here. And then the widget to focus is the one we just created. Now, let's make a left and right shoulder to navigate between um, the top bar. So right shoulder. All right. Now in a main widget, I'm gonna remove this because I'm not gonna use that, but keep it in mind if you want to set input to UI only that you're going to have to use on key down and you're going to have to branch out which button you just press. And we're going to create a new enum in blueprints, enumeration, e um, navigation type, All right? Um, main left and main right. Now, in the main widget itself, we're going to make a function and we're going to do receive navigation request. Let's do assets, don't do that. And in here as input, we're going to do it as the enum we just created, so e navigation type. Nav type. There we go. And then we can just simply switch this and then in here we can call the functions we need. So receive um, main left, receive main right. There you go. Now let's call receive main left here and receive main right here. Now, just to check if that's working, uh, we're gonna go ahead and do receive navigation request that is main left main right and let's just add a breakpoint so we can see if that's working it works perfect um so now we're already going in here and we can do anything we need from here um still yeah i'm still in mode okay also if i'm going too fast um can tell me. I tend to go a little bit too fast in these things. Um, all right. Now, how do you exactly control which button you're on? And we're going to actually make an integer for that. So we're going to do main um, navigation, navigation index. And that's an integer. Now, if we receive main left, that means that we're going to do minus. So if main navigation index minus one is lower than zero, right? Then we're going to do a select node. And then we're going to set it to three because, um, well, we have four and it's all zero based. Um, so now let's make that all nice and clean and print this just so we can see if this is working. No, that's not working. 
minus one. Okay, that is, there we go. I forgot to connect it up. There you go. And now you're cycling between three, two, one, zero and three, two, one, zero. Now that working. Now let's make that clean so we actually know what's happening here. There. Now let's do the same for the right, but then plus, obviously. Um, if that is larger than three, then we're going to select zero. Now you can also do a modulo for that, but I tend to do it this way. Um, all right. Mm, now let's print this to see if this is working. No, it's not. If it's larger than, yeah, then we have to set it to zero, obviously. Game that. All right. Now that we have that, um, what can we do with those indexes, right? So we have this button, and let's call it button main zero. No, don't turn around. Button main one. Button main two and button main three. That way we can easily identify them when we're using them in the event graph. Main one, main two, main three. Then we're gonna make it away from them. Go to that, gonna go to construct. And we're gonna save this as a variable so that it's main navigation array and we're gonna all make this nice and tidy because I like it nice and tidy now what do we have here now we have the array in the actual order so zero zero one one two two three three um so this is one uh, zero, one, two, three. Now, what we're gonna do is we're going to visualize which one we're on. So we know that we went main left and right. So what we can do is we can do update main nav appearance. Appearance, yeah. Because we have the index we have and we have the array. So we're going to loop through them. And we're going to check if that index is equal. And if that's equal, that means we're actually on that button. So let's do set background color with a select node. And if we're not, let's just set it to white like it is now. And if we are, let's put it to something orangey. And now if you see, we're actually going through this navigation page now. Now if you click on a button, you see this actually doesn't update. And now that's a problem because if you're here, then it would still represent news feeds and that's not really good. So what we're going to do is, we're going to go in here. I'm going to close these things because it's conveniently placed at the button. At the bottom, not button, <laughs> sorry. What we're going to do now here is we're going to set these indexes manually. So that's three. That's two. That's not 11, that's one. And this is zero. Set indexes manually. Now after that, what we can do again is update this main navigation appearance because you did technically the same as navigating with your gamepad, but you used actually clicking the button. So now if you click it, you see it actually turns to that color. And now if you go left, it actually saves from where you were. So it's it's really dynamic. You, you can use game 
pad and your mouse at any point. You don't have to change the setting or do something weird. Now, as you see, when you click play, well, I shouldn't have clicked that. <laughs> when you click play, nothing is selected, which is a bit weird. So what we're just going to do is um, begin play. Let's just construct. We're just going to update that. And because the index starts at zero, it's just going to select that one. Now, you can make it any color you want. You can make it pink, blue, whatever. It, it's whatever you want. Um, also tend to have them a little bit darker so they don't look as heavy. But I think that looks better, but that's just me. So now, what we're going to do is, um, we can now navigate through the buttons, but we need that to reflect something in the actual widgets, right? So we're going to add a widget switcher to this thing. We're going to fill that. And now in here, um, main nav switcher. In here, we're going to have a horizontal box. Right, and now let's just create one of them. And yeah, so go away. A vertical box in here. Um, a scroll box in there. That looks real different. Yeah. So the vertical box is on the left. We're going to add a size box to that so we can overwrite the width for 50. Uh, it's going to bug me if that says no line. Yeah, for 28. And then the scroll box is just everything to the right. No cat. Sorry, my cat is meowing if you hear that. And let's add a size box in there that I can override the height with, so we actually have a scroll box. Alright. Now that is index, that is second nav one. And now let's just add buttons in there on demand. So second nav one buttons list yeah something like that all right save all compile save uh yeah let's make that a variable because i'm just going to dynamically add button to that Construct objects. Okay. No. And we're gonna add child to vertical box. Does it compile? That it compiles. Perfect. There you go. It actually adds a button. Now let's add a for loop in here. So we can just add nine or well ten of them. No, no, now we simply added ten buttons and now we're gonna go through them and actually updating those. Um all right, so what we're gonna do is because we're gonna do this nine times, um technically in a good project you would actually make this a child widget. Um, or technically you wouldn't have four of the same ones. So um, I'm just going to copy pasting my code, which is bad. Don't ever do that, but I'm going to do it anyway. Um, so I'm going to add this to an array. Promote to variable. Second nav one array. And now we're going to assign on clicked, 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 second nav one. 
And now whenever we press one of these buttons, it should print hello. Yep, there we go. Because we're just telling um Oh no then. Wow. That how did that happen? Um so we're just telling this button to register that event. Um to this one. Um so what do we do now, right? Because we have this um that it actually doesn't return the button itself. That's convenient. Alright, let's make a button ourselves then. Which it will brand child button. Um just a button. An index. Let's make event dispatcher clicked on with an index. There we go. So now we're just going to create a widget of the child button. Expose this on spawn so we can set it manually. But in 4.17 they don't actually update. Convenient. There we go. Which will print the child button array. Add. And now we're ready. No, don't do that. Not add unique. Add. Just work with me. Not too much to ask. There you go. And now we're going to still assign this one. Clicked on. Clicked. Um, main nav one. Actually, it's does matter. You know what I'm doing. I think. Actually, let's just rename that. Click on second nav. So there's no possibility of it going south. All right. Now what do we have is we can actually now manually set this index, right? So. Second navigation index. It's an integer. Come here. Not an array. Then we can manually set this index. And now let's make a function update second nav appearance. Right? Now let's make this one. And this one. Now, why do we need this one, right? Because the second navigation is going to be determined by um, the main app. Because if you're in main navigation zero, you want to return a different array you want to alter um, with the second navigation. You don't want to always re alter the first one from the first widget selector. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a select and for now, there's only one because I only made one. So to zero. And let's do a loop again. Equal. I'm going to expose this as selected color and unselected color, just so we have consistency across everything. Let's just copy paste this. There we go. Obviously you need the button. Now I don't know if this will automatically work on your end as well because I have a setting turned on that automatically um, casts to what it needs to be. So I'm not sure if that will automatically work on your end. If not, just get the button and actually set it. So now what we can do is we can update the second nav appearance. If I click here, that should have worked. 
Mm. Let's print that. Okay. As usual, I don't actually call my functions. So on clicked, we do clicked on. There we go. That makes more sense. Um, so yeah, when something doesn't work, always ask yourself, do you call the function? Happens to me two times a day or so. All right, that's clean enough. Um, all right. Now, again, you see this isn't pre-selected, right? So what we're gonna do is, again, we're just going to go here and we're gonna do update the second nav appearance. Now it's important you do that behind this for loop because in front of it, you haven't actually called this logic yet. So now you see, you selected the first one by default. Oh yeah, I need to drink something. It's quite hot outside. Hmm. All right, now that that's done, um, let's do something very dirty and copy paste code. Never do that. Never copy paste code. But for the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to do it. So now we don't want to add it again to the same array, right? We want to have it on a second page. So what we're going to do is we're going to, again, copy paste in here. That is second nav one buttons list. Oh yeah, that's second nav two. Sorry. And I'll add it to the second one, not the first one. And also create a new array duplicate. Second nav two. All right, now this is a lot of um, icky work. You need to need to specify every item in the array and you always need to speak it to it. But I find that this is a very useful method to just easily connect and talk with everything instead of doing a lot of weird things in the engine because the engine kind of natively has support for it, but I, I don't like it. Um, so now we have a second array and we have yeah. Now what do we have is we set this second navigation index um, whenever we click on it, right? But what if the first one only has 10 and this one only has 8, but your index is 8 or so? Then you're trying to access something that's not going to work. So whenever you update the um, main navigation, always reset it to zero. So it always starts back at the top of the list. And then again, now you can call update second nav appearance. Now, before I go continue and um, show you the switching between left and right, I'm going to show you the switching between top and bottom. So in the enumeration we just made before, uh, we're gonna do second nav, and second nav down. All right. Now let's go back to the gamepad tutorial play controller. You have gamepad. I think it's D-pad. I always forget. Sorry. I never can really remember if it's D-pad or face buttons. Mm. That's down, so that's second nav down, second nav up. Receive a second up, receive a second down. All right. Mm. 
And I'll add a breakpoint so we see if it's working. It's not on neither. Now you are. Why? Second nav down. Okay, that works. Not sure what happened there, but now it works. Um, all right, so when we receive that, um, we obviously, again, need to speak to the correct array. So what we did before, um, update the second nav appearance, let's make that a function. Get related um, second nav. All right, let's make that a constant pure, so we can just get it. And then in here, it's going to be the second array. There we go. And then we can just return it. And now we need to copy paste this function around. Um, all right, no, get related second nav. Now in here, what you need to do is up, right? So if it's smaller than zero, the plus one, I'm going to copy paste. I don't feel like coding that again. So that's the second one you switch it with. Now you can't just use three because um, it's not gonna have static amount of indexes um, vertically. So what you do is you get the length of this minus one because it's zero based. And if it is, then set it to zero. Up, right? There. No way, that's wrong. So if plus, oh, I'm doing it, yeah, I'm confused. Um, so if minus is smaller than zero, then we're gonna set it because up, I was thinking visually up and um, not actually um, thinking, counting up. So visually up is going to be the minus and visually down is going to be the plus, all right? Now, once we have that, um, Again, we can update our second nav appearance. Now, stop doing that. Disable breakpoint, resume. There you go. So now you can actually scroll with the D-pad. Now we haven't coded down yet, so let's do that. So let's copy this to the down but replace it with a plus. If plus is larger than the minus one, then set it to zero. Otherwise, set it to whatever we are wanting to plus it with. And now, if that is larger than I always connect up the wrong ones. There you go. Now I can just go up and down, whatever you want. Now, if I keep pressing it in a game, you would generally want to have it to just keep going up and not just be stuck. Um, so how do you do that is simply making a timer. So let's disconnect these and do a set timer by event. Let's make a timer um, variable. D pad up timer. And if you release that, we're going to clear and invalidate the timer. And I just create a custom event. Go up. 
let's call it before the timer as well. Then every second or so, let's just go up one. So now every second, I'm keeping the button in. It's going up. And now when I lose it, it stops. But I should definitely loop that, otherwise it's not going to work. Let's turn it faster so you can see it better. There you go. You can easily go up. Now let's do the same for going down. So create event, custom event, go down. Let's set a timer. Now let's call go down whenever we click it. Point five. D pad down timer. And then now let's clear and invalidate as well. Now I can just, I need to loop this. I always forget to take a loop. There we go. Now I can just keep going down. I should turn off the down timer, not the up timer. All right. Now with that, um, where is my widget? Here it is. We now go up and down, right? But we also want to be able to do that with the second one. So I don't know if I coded that yet. I don't think I did. Or did I? No, I didn't do that yet. So now, um, what we actually didn't do is we didn't actually switch the widget switcher when we go left and right. So let's do that now. Um, so they can go into update main nav appearance because it's kind of the same thing. Index. And then main navigation index. See, now we're actually controlling the two different ones, but we're al always turning it um, zero. Now again, um, oh, actually I did that already. Never mind. I actually did that. Now I see we're running quite low on time because I actually didn't think it would take this long. Um, let's actually show that you can actually show different info based on the button you're on. So now, when we go to the update second, no, main nav appearance, um, let's actually put something in the scroll box, right? That is second nav to scroll box. Uh, let's actually put that in the size box here. Second nav to vertical two. No, we already have two. And then make this one. Um all right, well we click that. Then we're going to second nav. There's all the functions. Um, so now what we're going to do is we have this second navigation index. So we're going to get the, I need to expose them as a variable first. Nav one. And we're going to add a child. 
And now we're going to just create object, construct object is called. Self text block set text. We're just going to set it with the index. And there we go. But before we do that, we're going to clear it. Because you don't want to keep anything that's currently in there. Now, if I'm correct, that should technically. There you go. Now you can update the numbers in there. Basically, do whatever you want. It doesn't work on a second one because I haven't done it on a second one yet. Um, so yeah, that's basically how you create um, controls with um, your gamepad in EMG. So now I'm going to go over and see if there's any questions I can ask. Um, that I can respond to, sorry. Um, how do you add spacing between the buttons? You mean that there's like something in between that? You just go to this here, um, go to padding, you can do five, 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 compile save. And now there's a space between that. All right. Um, is it possible to move a number of menu items for, in your case, into a constant or variable? So after changing menu, no need to remember places where to put the number change. Yes, um, that's actually possible. Um, so when you go to the update, receive main left, um, what you can do is you can get this second, you know, the main navigation array, because you know that's all the buttons, right? So we can do last index or length minus one, whatever you want. You can do that here. And then technically that should work the exact same. Um, for a key right binding environment, would you recommend think dynamically or go straight away with static with your keys without letting the system open? Um, for a menu, I would just not change the keys. I, I don't think I've ever seen a game changing the way you control how the UMG changes or the UI changes. I don't think I've ever seen go right in a game in a setting. <laughs> Maybe I'm just thinking the wrong thing here. Uh, would it be better to create another variable to contain the set the navigation box to change? Um, yes, you can do that. Um, but for the purpose of this tutorial, I just kept it as simple as possible. Um, and as I said, do not copy paste code like I did. Um, actually do it properly in child widgets, but due lack of time, I couldn't really do that. Um, I think that's about it. I don't really see anything else. Um, so I have fun streaming. Um, I hope y'all learned something from it. Um, I think I'll probably do doing another stream, but I don't know when. Um, we'll see. But have a great day, everyone. Bye.